Just outside of Aspen, Colorado to drive one of the hottest entries into the compact premium space. Jaguar has a real contender. I had a chance to drive the larger XF last year and absolutely loved it. Similar engines in a smaller package, aluminum body, this should be fun. So let's get in, drive around this beautiful part of the world and I'll tell you what's new about this all new car. Now, I recently went on the Jaguar XF launch in Sonoma, Arizona and was impressed with that car uh, because of a couple of things. First of all, aluminum structure, 80% aluminum, aluminum suspension, wonderful engines. And now you take that goodness and you distill it down into a smaller package. And, and speaking to the engineers and the developers of these cars, they spent a lot of time and a lot of money on the suspension and the steering, and it shows. This car has a perfect 50-50 weight distribution, and it just dances through the corners. But this car also has two masters. You've got the performance side of Jaguar, and you've also got the luxury side of Jaguar. And for that, you need to have a suspension that can give you the compliance and also the cornering ability. And this car does that. So we've been going through the mountains here, and the handling of this car really is top notch. Then you add in, it's got an eight-speed ZF gearbox, and it's got a three 340 horsepower, three liter supercharged six cylinder engine, which right out of the gate has a lot of power. And this car can make a run to 100 kilometers an hour in just 5.1 seconds. So the driving dynamics are top notch. Is it best in class? You'd really have to do a back to back comparison, but I tell you what, this car does not disappoint in the handling department. So this is not the base car. We're gonna drive the base car next. That's the diesel, the new four-cylinder diesel engine that will be very popular in the Canadian market. We love diesel cars. Uh, it's a better price point and has lots of torque. So we've jumped out of the supercharged six-cylinder XE into the base car. So it's interesting in Canada, they don't have a two-liter gasoline uh, car like all of the other manufacturers. Jaguar is going right to the diesel as their base engine. Funnily, in the United States, they do have a two-liter gas engine, but I think it's only because it's available in rear-wheel drive that we're not getting it in our country. By the way, all Jaguar XEs come standard with all-wheel drive, and they have the ability to shift the torque up to 90% to the rear wheels or to the front wheels, depending on the road conditions, whether it's a hard acceleration, that would be rear wheel uh, for snow, 50-50, and maybe even if there's a limited traction, it could shift all of the torque up to the front wheels. So that's good, in conjunction with the perfect 50-50 weight distribution. So this two liter diesel engine is a turbocharged unit. It has 185 horsepower, but it's got sizable amount of torque at 318 pound feet. One thing that Jaguar does really well is limit the amount of noise that comes into the cabin. You would never know that this is a diesel car at all. There's no noise, no vibration. So on that front, they've done a great job. And once again, uh, I can't emphasize enough how good the suspension is. They invested in the suspension and the handling of this car and it shows. Now this XE, the larger XF, and even the F-Pace crossover all share the same platform and similar materials and layout on the inside. It's very simple and clean and quite logical. There are some quirks though, and I mentioned it about the F-Pace and it's true here as well. You see the big rotary dial here for the uh, gear selector. It steals a huge amount of real estate. Mercedes-Benz decided to put it up here on the column, which opened up a lot of room. That's one thing. Then you have the volume knob is closer to the pad passenger than the driver. Sure, you have steering wheel controls, but that seems a little out of step. But my biggest complaint is the fact that these cars all have hard material still on the inside of the cabin. Now, if you were going to buy a non-premium car, that's totally acceptable. If you're in the luxury space, you look at the Mercedes, Benz, Audi, and others, uh, BMW, they all have a softer touch materials on the bottoms of the door and the glove box, and that saves the car from scratching and showing age prematurely. Then you get into the screens in the center console. This is where the good stuff starts. It starts with a base eight inch unit, and you can get this larger 10.2 inch unit. That's called the InTouch Pro. 
Unlike the F-Pace, when you get that larger screen, you don't get the digital console behind the steering wheel. In the F-Pace, you get the bigger screen in the dash, you also get a full digital readout in the instrument cluster. All of these cars get the regular gauges, the speedo and the tack, and a 5-inch display, which is good, and you can go from 8 inches to 10.2 inches. That's all good stuff. Now, space. This is not a big car, and it's going to be one of the smallest ones in its category. Backseat space really is limited. This is a perfect car for a single person couple. I'm not sure it's the best idea for kids. The XF is a better choice or an F pace. Overall, nicely done. They could tweak a few things to make it as good, if not better, than the competition. I find it really interesting that Jaguar is not offering a two liter gasoline four cylinder engine. They're going right to the diesel and they're charging a premium for that. The diesel starts at $45,500 and goes to $54,500. If you want to get the supercharged gas engine, that starts at $48,500 and goes to $57,500. Now with that car, you have to sort of marry it up with an S4 to get similar kind of horsepower. If you don't like the size, they'll always sell you an XF and the XF is built on this same platform.